Hello, my name is Patrick Corbett and I'm here today to talk to you about the comparison of core data and well test data. So when we come to compare core and well test permeability we can calculate an average from the core and we can calculate uh, from the pressure derivative and the build-up uh, we can calculate the permeability thickness. So what we don't know is what the formation looks like near the well or what it looks like further away from the well. The core plug averages can then be compared with the well test permeabilities and this gives us the opportunity to visualize what is in the near well bore region and perhaps to visualize what the formation consists of. So the textbooks show us that there are three ways of averaging core data. We have the arithmetic average the geometric average and the harmonic average and the formulas are given here. Now the way we use these averages in reservoir engineering uh, most commonly is to consider that the arithmetic average is what we would use for horizontal bed parallel flow, the harmonic average to be vertical bed series flow and the geometric average for flow both in the vertical and horizontal direction when the system is totally random. On the right hand side there you have a little inset which shows that sometimes the rocks are layered vertically and therefore you would, in that case you'd use the harmonic average in the horizontal direction and you'd use the arithmetic average in the vertical direction but most of the time we use the arithmetic average for the horizontal bed parallel flow and the harmonic average for the vertical bed series flow. So in order to understand the link between the averages and the geology we consider three very different geological scenarios. At the top we have a well layered system, a layer cake geometry and in that system one would expect the arithmetic average. The middle uh, picture shows a, a partially layered more jigsaw type reservoir where the sand bodies are interacting uh, in three dimensions around the well bore and there we would expect to see the geometric average and in the lower case we have almost isolated sand bodies and uh, there the flow is across the material that lies between the sand bodies which in the case of, of, of a shale and channel sandstone reservoir would be no impermeable and therefore the, the well would just uh, not show consistent long-term flow but would more show depletion of the channels that you are intersecting with the well bore. It's more of a labyrinth isolated reservoir. When it comes to compare well tests and core perms, we need to consider the nature and the scale of the layering within the volume of investigation of the well test. In clastic reservoirs, the well test permeability often lies somewhere between the arithmetic and the geometric average. In carbonates, on the other hand, we often see that the well test permeability is low and lies between the geometric average and the harmonic average in the absence of fractures that is. So now we come to an example of a comparison between well test and core data. We have the two wells, well A and well B and we show the histograms of the data, the core data on a natural log scale. As well as looking at the histograms, it is also important to see the vertical distribution of the porosity and the permeability uh, in the well. These uh, two logs uh, show permeability data. The track on the left is showing the log scale and the track on the right is showing the linear scale. It's important when you come to think of well testing that you also look at the linear scale because that's what highlights where the higher permeability features are. In well A they're in a series of minor channels, relatively thin intervals, whereas in well B they're in major intervals which are quite thick. This uh, work was comes from an SPE paper that has been published some years ago. So here we're showing the log log plots associated with the well test data. Uh, the top lines represent the uh, pressure build up and then below we have the derivative and the interval that's highlighted in R is where we would take the radial flow regime. The radial flow regime 
would give us a permeability thickness. If we take into account the perforated thickness, we end up calculating uh, 44 millidarcies for the well on the uh, left hand side and 1024 for the well on the right hand side. So clearly, the large scale effective permeability of these two wells is really quite different, even though they are in the same reservoir. The uh, well test responses are so different that it requires some sort of geological explanation to understand this. When we compare the core and test, it's useful to go back to the histograms. And here we've plotted where the well test effective permeability is on the hist core plug histograms. And, and what we see is that in well B, remember well B has 1,000, more than 1,000 millidarcy, the permeability plots and points towards the higher mode in the bimodal distribution. So it looks to be coming from the high permeability intervals. Whereas in well A, the well test permeability at 40 millidarcies was quite close to the geometric average. And here the black arrow indicates that the well test permeability is closer to the combination, if you like, of the high perm and the low perm. It's important to note that the histograms don't really carry the spatial information, the clustering information, and therefore there is no real architecture here, which is a key point of the geology. And therefore you can't just tell the effective permeability by looking at the histogram. So this is the geological interpretation that you can come up with. We observed in well A that the high permeability zones are quite thin, so the channels being thin were probably not very extensive whereas in the well B, the channels were thicker and therefore much more extensive. Uh, where there is large scale channels, perhaps these are some sort of a valley, even larger than a single channel, they might be some sort of incised valley. And in the sequence stratigraphic interpretation, it may be that the uh, well A is in more of an interflue area. So where we're looking at the floodplain effective flow. So, you know, you could say that well A uh, is showing floodplain effective flow, floodplain and channels that is, uh, whereas the well B is showing the uh, higher flow rate, 20 times higher flow rate effectively from just the channels. And so this is the geological interpretation that we came up to explain the very different well tests that we saw in these two wells. To show you what this might look like if you were looking at a reservoir, we found a unit out there in, in Utah where we could see what we thought were similar architectures. Uh, in the area that we call well A, we can see channels interacting with each other and therefore in this area you would expect a combination of floodplain and channel flow. Whereas in the area that we call uh, well B on this image, we can see the more significant thick channels, uh, perhaps even valley fills or composite channels. Uh, the, the large scale outcrops are very useful for seeing the sorts of architectures that we encounter in well tests and they do help to explain why two wells in the same formation can have very different responses even though they are really quite close together. Thank you for listening to this short part of my course. I hope that's useful for your studies and uh, maybe it's useful for your later careers too. Thank you very much.